Welcome back as we begin this 10th day of Advent and we find ourselves in the Gospels and that's where we're going to spend uh, quite a bit of time because it's in the Gospels that we learn about the Advent of Jesus, the historical Advent of Jesus. I uh, invite you to turn to the first chapter of Matthew and before we get into uh, the, the verses of 18 uh, to the end of the chapter, there's that large portion of 17 verses in the very first chapter that I guess a lot of people skim over because uh, it deals with one of the most difficult parts of the Bible, which is all those names uh, that sometimes are hard to pronounce or hard to figure out. And uh, when you're talking about all these different people, a lot of people don't know who these people are. Uh, they are from the Old Testament. Uh, and what Matthew has done, which is beautiful beginning to his gospel. And you will notice that each of the gospels begin a different way. Uh, Matthew has a love for connecting the Old Testament to the New Testament. Now, Matthew, of course, there was no New Testament when Matthew was around. That would come afterwards. But he knew the significance of the Jewish or Hebrew Bible. And so he was trying to make connections between the Bible of his day uh, that had talked about God and all the promises of God and the, the magnificent miracles of God and the relationship between God and his people uh, and even the beginning of the world with God when there was nobody else here yet. He takes all of that and he's trying to make connections now to Jesus because Jesus is the culmination of all that you read about in the Old Testament. For us as Christians, that's what we believe. That's why we have the Old Testament but also the New Testament. It's the same God it's just a continuation of that story and on our saving, uh, our, our story of salvation. So when you get to Matthew, the first thing you read is, as he says, an account of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So Matthew is able to identify Jesus in three ways. He calls him the Messiah. Of course, that was the, the one who was promised. God would send somebody to be the Savior, uh, to save his people. He's also known as the son of David, David the king, uh, the, one of the most famous kings in the Old Testament, uh, king of Israel, uh, whom God chose. And then the son of Abraham. Abraham was the uh, man who God began the covenant with. Uh, Abraham's faith was reckoned to him as righteousness, as it says in the scriptures. And so the covenant with God began uh, that would journey all the way through time. So Jesus is connected as the son of God, the Messiah, the son of David, the king, and the son of Abraham, who is known as the father of faith. And then he goes into list three sets of 14 generations. And he goes from Abraham and that the 14 generations there, and then David and the 14 generations there. And then the deportation to Babylon, and that would be when Jerusalem fell to the invaders, Babylon. And that would take you from the end of the king period all the way to the prophetic period, all the way up to Jesus. Because remember, when Jesus is born, Israel is not its own country. It is owned or um, uh, taken over by, at that point in time, by the Romans. But it had already been invaded numerous times. Before the Romans, there were the Greeks. Before the Greeks, there were the Persians. Before the, the Persians, there were the Babylonians. Before the Babylonians, uh, of course, Assyria was on its way. They had already taken the northern kingdom. Uh, they just didn't get to the southern kingdom, but the Babylonians did. So you have all that history. Now, the neat thing about this genealogy is, have you ever done your genealogy to any extent? Um, you will know that uh, you learn about the people in your history. Uh, who you're related to, people who go back through time. And if you really have a good genealogy, uh, if you're blessed with that, you'll learn some of the stories associated with those people. And uh, they don't have to be famous people, uh, but people nonetheless. And I was just talking with somebody today who said, you know, no matter how far back you go in history, uh, you learn that people are basically the same. Uh, they still operate the same way, and it's, it's true. And if you go into Jesus' genealogy, uh, you know, it, Jesus' genealogy was not perfect. <laughs> there were some real characters uh, in uh, Jesus' heritage. And, uh, you know, just thinking about David. David was not a perfect man. He was a great fighter. 
He was a great king, but he also made a lot of mistakes uh, with his uh, family life, uh, where he sinned a great deal and had to seek the Lord's forgiveness. So he knew about uh, not only grace, but also mercy in his life from God. And Abraham, you know, Abraham didn't always make the best decisions, and that ran him into trouble, uh, the trouble of having a child uh, with someone who wasn't his wife, even after God told him he would have a child with his wife, despite their old age. Um, so, you know, there are, there are a lot of stories about these, these people. But the people in between that are mentioned also have their own stories. And when you read the Old Testament, you learn about these people. And you'll hear about uh, Isaac and Jacob and uh, some of the stories that are there. You know, um, after Abraham went to sacrifice his son Isaac and God intervened and told him, No, I see that you have faith in me, even though I've asked you to sacrifice your son. Uh, you were about to do it, but I will intervene. We don't hear from Isaac anymore. So you wonder what that relationship became like after that event. I'm sure Isaac maybe didn't feel too good about uh, his father preparing him to die on the altar. Jacob, we know Jacob the deceiver, uh, whose name eventually became Israel, but in the beginning of his life he was not the um, most trustworthy guy. Uh, you read in there about uh, other people. You get to Rahab. What was Rahab's profession? Uh, in her early days, at least, she was a prostitute. So you get to read about her. Ruth, Ruth was not born into the family. She was a Moabite, uh, considered uh, not necessarily of the lineage uh, directly into the, the, the family of God. And yet, because she married into uh, the family through Boaz, uh, she gave birth to the, uh, one of the grandfathers of David. So uh, you see that uh, there is this mixed lineage. And then you get into uh, David and his family. Uh, you see kings listed there. Not all of those kings were necessarily very faithful. Uh, for the most part, they were better than the kings of Israel, the northern kingdom. But they still had their time of uh, transgressions. And then once you get into the kings during the season of Babylon, uh, we don't know much about them, but we do know that they uh, also had their struggles. And of course, it takes you down to Jacob, another Jacob, a later Jacob, who was Joseph's father. And of course, Joseph was the one who raised Jesus after Mary had given birth to him through the Holy Spirit. So genealogies are, are very interesting things. You can learn a lot about characters in your family history, just as Jesus has here. Uh, so you can see the very human nature of Jesus. He was born into human flesh in many, many ways, uh, even into a family that, that was not perfect. And yet God was able to continue his promise of sending a Savior, even through these imperfect people, uh, because he chose how to send his son into human flesh and to be part of uh, the human family at that point, uh, connected to each one of us, knowing that we have a genealogy through faith that connects to Jesus. And that's so important uh, during Advent because here you see the historical dimension of Advent. But because we are of human flesh, uh, where is our connection to the genealogy of Jesus? And that talks about the personal dimension of Advent. You know, have we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior? Have we uh, decided to trust him with our lives and given our lives over to him so that he now leads us in how we live? Uh, do we uh, give our hearts to him in worship and service and praise? Um, do we study his word? Uh, do we want to get to know him so that when he does return, we know exactly who he is and that we will be one of the first people to call out uh, that here comes Jesus in the second coming? So all the dimensions of Advent, you can see, are so interconnected. Um, just from the very first 17 verses of uh, Matthew. So think about that. Um, how is my genealogy connected to Jesus? Am I connected to the family of God? That only comes through faith. It only comes through believing in Jesus and accepting him as your Lord and Savior. So I pray that that is where you are and that you do know your place in his family and that uh, you know that he has received you, he's died for you, and he loves you. So let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for this season of Advent as we continue this journey together. Uh, may this be a time in which our minds are enlightened, our hearts are lifted up with joy, and our spirit, our souls, are filled to overflowing uh, with your holy presence. 
and that we would receive you as our King and as our Lord and Savior, and that we would know that there is no one uh, to worship and honor uh, outside of you. So we give you thanks for this season. Prepare our hearts as we look forward to the day in which we celebrate your birth. Through Christ we pray. Amen. And may God bless you as you continue to learn and grow in the faith of Jesus Christ.